Hello Internet, Internet. Big Dave here, and I am cheap. Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and this is Nuclear Throne from Flambeer. Now, if you're not familiar with this game, you're about to get familiar with this game because I am going to be doing a series here on the channel where I play this game. So let's just jump right in, let's acclimate ourselves to the game, and let's enjoy all of the zany shooting action that is contained here within Nuclear Throne. Now, every person who plays this game on the internet, on YouTube, always does the same thing. So who am I to really buck the system? We're going to start out with the first character in the game. He's sort of the mascot of the game. This is Fish, and we are going to get moving on here. Some of these characters are female. Uh, it's not necessarily obvious from just looking at them if they are. So if I use the incorrect pronoun, please forgive me. Feel free to correct me. Let's jump in so you can see exactly what the hell this game is all about. So here we go. Fish gets a passive. Every character gets a passive and an active ability. His passive is he gets more ammo, and his active is that he can dodge roll. So let's jump into things and let's get going. It is a twin sticky type shooter. And uh, yeah, let's shoot some stuff. Let's get some items and let's try to ascend to the nuclear throne. These little green pieces of uranium or radioactive, what have you, are the currency of the game. They are the XP that I need in order to fill the little uh, bar up here and level up. If I level up during a map, I will get a chance between levels to choose a new ability. Now, I did pick up a grenade launcher, so we're going to try to use that to great effect here against this scorpion. And indeed we did. So in order to defeat a level, you must clear all of the enemies, and I know it looks like we've cleared all the enemies from this level, as I don't see anything walking around or living, but there is indeed still a hive of maggots left in the lower corner here, so once we clear this, we will indeed be done. And we don't quite hit our level. I like to try to get a level out of level 1 if I can, if at all possible, but it just didn't happen that time. So we're going to have to live with it. Ah, uh, nice little cache of experience here. We'll shoot that thing open and grab all that XP. We are definitely leveling up this time around. We'll pepper in some uh, grenade shots up here. Now the XP will fade after a moment or two, so we do have to be careful to jump up and grab it. Or else we're going to be very sad. All right, there we go. Through two levels, we get our first chance to level up. So we have a few options here. We have Bloodlust, where some kills will regenerate HP. We've got Sharp Teeth, where damage taken to me will be dealt to all enemies. Rabbit Paw will give us more item drops. And Impact Wrists will cause corpse to fly, corpses to fly and hit harder. When I do shoot something and it dies, its corpse sort of has a little knockback, and that knockback in turn can hit other enemies. This can actually set up some really cool combos, but I think I'm just going to go with Rabbit's Paw to start. I am far from an expert at this game. I will, I will make poor choices many, many times. I welcome your advice, certainly. I welcome your informed advice. Uh, if you just want to tell me that I suck at the game, you're welcome to do that too. I, I don't have a particular problem with being told I'm bad at video games. So we have our first boss here, the uh, big bandit, and he's hanging out off the screen, which is exactly where I want him to be for right now. Kind of get a little bit of a strategy here, clear out some of these uh, grunts, and try to address the boss a little bit more in a one-on-one -on -one context. A little more clear out here for us. There we go. Like a grenade launcher to clear out a little bit of a space for us here. And luckily the bandit didn't corner us, he just kind of went away. And uh, I'm actually pretty happy about that, so no major complaints there. Alright, so we're going to uh, pepper him with grenades, and we're going to try to finish this level up, and there we go. Not too bad, we got another level for ourselves. We finished up that uh, Wasteland section. The first three levels, I do believe, are called the Wastelands. So this time, uh, Sharp Teeth uh, rearing its ugly head again. We've got Racing Mind, Kills Lorry Reload Time, Homing Bolts, which can be super powerful, and Back Muscle for a higher, higher ammo max. 
So I don't really plan to take damage, but uh, you never know. Damage does happen. Uh, and I think, actually, that's probably going to be the best option here. I'm not really close to maxing out my ammos. Well, I'm kind of close to maxing out explosives, but anyway. Let's jump into the sewers. The sewers are interesting in that they're kind of just a transition. Uh, transitioning between uh, the wasteland and the next area. I couldn't tell you what the next area is called, though. But we are dark. This is a bit of a weird uh, level. Mostly filled with enemies who will sort of run at you and melee you in the form of these mice. These rats, I suppose these aren't mice. Mice are cute, right? These are definitely not cute. And I hear the unmistakable sound of a belching mother rat. So we're going to try to track that thing down as quickly as we can. Hopefully without dying, but you never know. I'm wasting a lot of ammo here. Trying to... Uh, we got a sneaky, sneaky melee enemy right there. And we're just in a really bad, we're in a really bad place right now. Uh, we are probably done here. We are running low on bullets. We are running low on health. Okay, 30 more bullets. That'll help us out a little bit. Gotta find that mother rat. There's that mother rat. And we killed ourselves trying to avoid my own grenade. I have died. So we'll just restart. We'll do about uh, 15 to 30 minutes with fish, and then we'll go on about our business. I hope you're kind of starting to get an idea of how the game works. I hope you're enjoying what you see, and I hope that you'll stick around for at least a few episodes in this little series here that I'm going to be doing on the channel. Funny story here, I actually was supposed to be recording some Friday Night Magic tonight, but the Magic servers are not functional right now as I'm trying to record, and so guess what? We record Nuclear Throne instead, so this might become a thing just because the magic servers were down. We shall see. So every now and then it's going to look like I make a really skillful dodge. I can almost guarantee that that's not the case. Those will almost always be accidental. We're rolling with the Assault Rifle right now, which is a, a three-shot burst weapon, which actually has a lot of really good potential, but can be a bit unwieldy. Let's see what we have. Red chests will actually uh, have a weapon in them. And we're going to get the Laser Pistol. I think I will hang on to the Assault Rifle and Laser Pistol right now. And the Laser Pistol can definitely do some pretty serious damage. Now this one maggot is probably the last enemy on the level, so I'm going to take this opportunity to explore the level, make sure I got all the goodies, make sure I'm not leaving anything behind, any potential XP behind here, and then I'm going to kill this maggot. And move on. So what are we offering this time? Recycle land, most hit bullets become ammo. Boiling veins, no damage from explosions, which this can actually be a really good one later on. And Racing Mind kills lower your reload time, as well as some extra speed in the form of extra feet. We're going to go for most bullet hits become ammo, because we do have this three-shot burst, which is potentially wasting ammo. You can see the little one bullet uh, notification flying up there when one of my hit bullets does, in fact, become ammunition. I like that. I like it. Kind of keeping us at a bit of an equilibrium. We are going to continuously lose bullets but having the ability to regenerate some of those bullets just by shooting people in the face is uh, pretty desirable. Ooh, taking some unneeded damage there. There really wasn't a whole lot I could necessarily have done to jump out of that spot, but I could have probably handled that better by never cornering myself in the first place. And he lives. He still lives. All right. But we have murdered him. The bandit is down. We're just going to clear out here. We're going to try not to take any more damage. Finish off that particular enemy. Now, we're nearly out of energy, so I'm going to waste a few more enemies. Then I'm going to pick up this sledgehammer down here before the level ends. That was horrible. All right, so we've got a couple of weapon options here. We've got the shotgun, which is an amazing weapon, but I'm going to go ahead and take the sledgehammer. Oh, the disc gun, you are tempting me. 
Anybody who's played Super Crate Box will remember the disc gun fondly, perhaps, and uh, will know pretty much exactly what it's going to do to you, which is pretty much kill you in almost every circumstance. Uh, the melee weapons in this game are pretty good. They generally will deflect projectiles and can be good in close quarters environments like the sewer, which is coming up right now. So we've got eagle eyes for better accuracy, shotgun fingers, shells bouncing farther. We've got laser brain for um, energy weapons dealing more damage. It'd be nice if we still had that laser pistol and lash wish. It gets a full ammo, uh, get full health and some ammo. We're going to definitely take that because we need it. So it's not really a lasting upgrade for us, but it is something that we desperately need right now and might at least allow us to get through the uh, sewers here. That was bad damage. There was a little bit of uh, wind-up time on this. You can only sw you can't swing uh, continuously. You do have a moment of uh, resetting the swing before you can swing again. So you do have to use that swing wisely. Okay, okay, there we go. Now these rat guys generally take about three shots. So if you can get a single burst into them, it usually works out pretty well for you. Okay, and I don't like the look of that because that is going to, usually that's going to turn into a toxic cloud, but it doesn't appear to have done so this time. Again, remember this is an early access game. It is heavily in development and you will see all manner of odd things occurring in this game, some of which are on purpose. You will occasionally see quite strange and interesting things happen, uh, which are intentional, but you will very often also see bugs and other sorts of things like that manifest themselves. There you go. Now that one, that one definitely exploded into some toxic gas. That can definitely be a, a weapon you can use against your enemies if you uh, kind of time that right, set that up. There we go. We did. Yes. Okay. We got all that XP and we got to level four. All right. We got two. Yes. Character level four. Okay. Homing bolts again. Homing bolts is extremely overpowered. Slow enemy bullets. Less enemy HP. Some kills regenerate ammo. I think we're going to go for slower enemy bullets because some bullet heli stuff is starting to come up here in a moment. Oh, the slugger. I don't know if I can resist the slugger. No, no, no. Flame salamanders. I do not like flame salamanders. They're a relatively new enemy. I believe they were just added to the game in the most recent update. Uh, the game is very regularly updated. The development is also streamed on Vlambear's YouTube channel. Uh, Paul Veer also streams a lot of his graphical uh, work for the game as well. Uh, JW, the programmer, uh, does tend to stream uh, weekly. I believe it's on Thursdays. I can't remember for sure. That is information that I'm sure will be locked into my head after a few more weeks of playing this game. I don't know the interaction of the sledgehammer with the fire. Do I dare? Let's see. Okay, that's cool. And again, you, there you can see the uh, ability to knock the bullets away or directly back at your enemies comes in extremely handy. Uh, these old cars will explode, so might as well just go ahead and explode it. Let's see, there must be something lurking up here waiting for us. Yes, indeed. Quite a lot of somethings. Alright, the sniper guys with the awesome hats uh, explode, so that's not something that we want to see. Use that to our advantage where we can. Those little, uh, those little hitman bastards actually fake being dead. Okay. Okay, so we're looking good right now, actually. The jackhammer is an entertaining weapon. Uh, but not one that I'm going to take right now. It's a melee weapon that I believe uses explosive ammo. Uh, it, it's pretty pretty nuts, but also it is uh, not something I've actually been able to use very effectively. Oh, that was horrible damage. 
Okay, okay, let's uh, let's concentrate here. It does it does definitely tick up in difficulty in this area here, so... So that gentleman sitting there, this is something I actually only figured out just earlier today, and then I actually did end up looking it up to confirm it. Uh, he will suck in the XP of all these different guys that you kill uh, nearby him. And eventually, he will open a special portal. Uh, what he will also do is what he just did. He will call the cops on you if you shoot him. Um, and the cops are really, really badass in this game. And they will cause you a whole lot of trouble. Uh, let's go ahead and trade for the plasma gun because I need a little bit of help here. The plasma gun is sort of a BFG in nature. It doesn't really kill everything on screen, but it kills everything sort of close by when it does uh, trigger. And I've totally cornered myself here. And I am most likely dead. And hopefully I'll be able to get out here. Yeah, there's, there's the portal. All right, so... He, ex uh, he got enough XP that he actually formed the portal, and here we are. So we can get in here, potentially get a little bit of a special item. Let's see, yep, there we go. So we can get a crown, I believe it is. There we go. So the crowns, uh, you can have no crown, you can add XP, you can add HP, but no more HP drops. Uh, max one, uh, one, minus one, max rev, uh, HP revenge. I don't know. Uh, pickups fade fast, but they're worth more. No ammo drops, more weapon drops. Lose health and gain radiation over time. More enemies. Free mutation, narrow future, and ammo chests only. I don't know if I really like our weapon setup enough to take that. Uh, but, yeah, what the heck. I'll take this. And we have the crown of life, and we are into the boss of this area, who is probably going to destroy me in short order. This is definitely where the game gets bullet helly. Uh, he is going to do that right there. So I'm just going to sort of pepper the area with uh, some of these to try and uh, do whatever I can to eliminate some enemies and maybe even kill this guy. Oh my god, I killed him. So that's the first time I've ever killed that guy, officially. And that's pretty amazing. So I am almost out of energy completely uh, and out of ammunition completely on my gun. So I am going to take the sawed off shotgun and we're going to move on. So that is a first right there, ladies and gentlemen, the first time I have actually beaten that boss. So uh, kind of cheesed him a bit from the corner with the plasma gun, but I take it however I can get it. Sharp teeth, no damage from explosions. This is where that gets good, that last level, especially that last area. Some kills regenerate HP. And some kills regenerate ammo. We're in a pretty bad spot on ammunition, so... Uh, oh my god. Alright, this is the Crystal Caves. I do believe I've heard about the Crystal Caves, uh, but that is it. That is the full extent of my experience with the Crystal Caves. And, uh, well, now I've, uh, I've seen the Crystal Caves briefly, and now I've died in the Crystal Caves in another moment or two here. Okay, so the spider webby things slow you down, and those green guys absolutely murder you. Okay, well that was uh, pretty cool. Let's do one more run here with uh, fish, and we will call it. Uh, I've had a lot of fun so far doing this, making it to new areas I've never actually made it to before, feeling pretty psyched about the uh, game in general. I've put maybe two hours into this game prior to starting up this series, and I'm really looking forward to putting in a whole lot more time as I continue to play Nuclear Throne. So I don't know that I'm necessarily going to stick to a character per episode. Wow, that was a low XP level. A character per episode uh, kind of set up the way that so many other people 
tend to do. Uh, but I'm probably going to do that for the first two or three episodes. After that, we'll, we'll come on, we'll start to experiment and we'll start to uh, try to get our feet, get a feel for who we like and actually focus in on kind of uh, playing maybe a certain set of characters that give us advantages. You know, we might spend maybe two or three episodes playing a lot of different characters. Wow, two levels without a level up. And that will kind of get us the information we need to be able to... to be able to pick our favorite and kind of start working through our favorite. Uh, Triple Machine Gun, which is a, a novelty, but really isn't all that great. Uh, we can probably clean a little bit of house with it, though, so we're going to do that. All right, now we are almost out of bullets, as you might expect. We're going to go ahead and finish off the bandit here. We can use our roll to some effect here. He does have a charge, so I don't want to get too close. I don't want to tempt him too much uh, because he does have that charge. So really slow start this time because we didn't get a lot of uh, experience in the first two levels. So we can get extra speed, higher rate of fire as HP gets lower, damage taken as Delta all on screen, and higher max ammo. Now, I don't intend to take damage. I never intend to take damage, but I know that I will take damage. And Sharp Teeth has popped up on almost every upgrade screen, so I'm finally going to take Sharp Teeth. All right, I've got to ditch this triple machine gun. It was a fun novelty, but now it is going to be a burden the further we go. All right. Let's deal with these rats. Definitely need to take it slow with the rats. They can easily, easily overwhelm you. And uh, many a run has, uh, has ended in this area because I was sloppy with rats. Sloppy like this. That was sloppy. Very sloppy. As I was talking, it got sloppier. Oh, two mama rats back there hiding. Hey, the triple machine gun made short work of them. Oh, God. All right, so just for entertainment's sake, we're going to take the disc gun to finish off the run here, and we will also definitely take rhino skin which is going to give us not only four health, but it's also going to give us four additional uh, max health. So there's the disc gun. Yeah, it shoots a disc of death that is very effective at killing anyone, that includes you, that it might come in contact with. So it is very bad in tight corridors. It is very bad in areas where little tiny environmental things can bounce back or cause bounce back. But you can always fill a room with discs and uh, have a little bit of fun from time to time. Oh, a bunch of those discs actually just went into the wall. And we are out of discs. Ah, okay. So these flame salamanders are a giant pain in the butt. Uh, as you might expect, if one were to encounter flame salamanders, uh, that they wouldn't be a walk in the park. Uh, but they are especially a nuisance. Uh, so the minigun looks and sounds great, but um, it's going to not have a whole lot of ammo. So I think I'm actually just going to stick with the disc gun and the shotgun as we have it right now. So, Oh my goodness. Alright, did we deal with him? We dealt with him, alright. So I know at, at this point, you know, we've had uh, a lot of poor-ish play, and that is the whole... Wow, that was... that was almost like I staged that. That's pretty much the note that you want to end on right there. I was going to say, I know we've had a lot of poor play, but the goal of this series is to improve my play and to stop making stupid mistakes. And then I fire a disc gun right into a wall and it bounces back and kills me. I think there is no better way to end this than that. So thank you guys for tuning in. Expect at least, I would say, 10 more episodes of this series. If it goes well beyond that, I will continue things moving. But I want to take a good chunk of time, a good, 
you know, three to ten hours to play and immerse myself in this game, and I might as well record myself while I'm doing it. Thank you very much for enduring all of that. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.